Well, here's a quick video to talk about uh, some op amp power supply considerations and the difference between split supply operation and single supply operation. Uh, most times when you look at an op amp, uh, the power supply connections are often labeled V plus and V minus. Uh, sometimes they're labeled VCC plus and VCC minus or VCC and VEE and VDD and VSS. But, uh, but they're typically, you know, typically labeled in this way because most of the times our op amps or many op amps are specified for split supply operation, so neither of them are called ground. Okay? But the reality is, is that even op, op amps that are spec for split supply operation can be used in a single supply application. The op amp doesn't really care. Okay? You know, an example of kind of that equality is looking at this situation here. Here's a split supply for an op amp plus or minus 5 volts. Okay, and often if you see something like this, you know, the non-inverting input to the op amp is referenced to ground. So that means your input signals are referenced to ground and, and everything is kind of referenced to ground. But the, we can bias the op amp in this way, say with a 10 volt supply, okay, and ground. I still have 10 volts across the supply pins. And then uh, bias the non-inverting input to plus 5 volts, okay. And so it's still midway between the two supply rails. Okay, just like it was here. So that's an equivalent, you know, biasing situation as far as the op amp is concerned. And oftentimes you'd see this implemented in a circuit like this. Okay, uh, where I've got a single supply biasing up the op amp, and oftentimes just a simple resistor divider to create a a voltage here that is halfway between VCC and ground. And that'll just get decoupled to make it kind of stable, and that becomes the reference for the non-inverting input for the op amp. When you do this, this point is often called a virtual ground because it's not really truly ground, okay? But it does become a point, a reference point for any of the signals that are applied uh, for the op amp and a reference point for the negative feedback. So it's often called a virtual ground for that, that reason is that uh, it becomes a, a reference point, a new reference point where ground was often a reference point in the past, okay? Well, so why do we care about this, and, and why can't we just simply operate all op amps this way? Okay. Um, so one of the reasons is that uh, traditionally op amps, uh, when they were designed, you know, didn't have uh, the ability for the inputs to get all the way or, or be driven you know, near the positive supply or near the negative supply. You typically had to have a couple of volts between where these inputs are and the positive or negative supply rail. So the one first question you have to ask is how close can the inputs get to, to V plus or V minus and still operate properly? That's called the input common mode range or input voltage range of the op amp. And many of the original op amps couldn't get to within a few volts of either supply. So hence we use split supplies and just kept everything kind of in the middle. Okay. Similarly, uh, the outputs uh, typically would not be able to drive all the way to either supply rail in many cases. Okay, so again, we kept the supplies, you know, you know, split supplies, had everything referenced around ground and just did all of our work in that area. Okay, so, uh, so and w for most of these op amps, that uh, if the inputs and outputs can't be driven close to the supply rails, then the op amp was usually specced with split supplies. Okay, but it can still be used with a single supply. We just have to take care to keep the input and output voltages within the allowed range. Let's take a look at a spec, for example, to kind of show what we mean by by these voltage ranges, and we'll take a look at the implication of that. So, what I've got here is a data sheet for an old uh, you know, 1458 op amp, which is really just a dual 741. The 741 op amp is probably uh, you know, the, mo the most popular op amp that people have heard of, okay, and is often spec with a plus or minus 15 volt supply. This 1458 is no different. If we take a look at uh, some of the DC characteristics here, spec at plus or minus 15 volts, okay. Uh, some of the important specs we want to worry about are right here. Here's our input voltage range. Sometimes it's called the input common mode range. That input voltage range is spec minimum plus or minus 12 volts. And typically plus or minus 13. Okay, so that says that uh, we're only guaranteed that uh, we'll get proper operation if those input signals are kept away from the positive and negative supply rails by three volts. You know, sometimes you get away with getting up to close closer to two volts, but it's only guaranteed to operate properly when you get to within uh, three volts of the supply rail. Okay, 
So similarly, the output voltage swing, if we take a look at that, that has some similar numbers, a couple of different specs for different load resistance. But again, same numbers here, plus or minus 12 volts, plus or minus 13, 14 volts. So uh, we're not going to guaranteed to get any closer than about 3 volts from the supply rail with a high impedance load. Worse than that with a low impedance load, but you know, typically we'll get closer, but not always. Okay. So you might conclude from looking at this and saying, well, I don't want to use this on any kind of a single supply operation because I, I really have to keep far away. So maybe I can't use it for anything other than you know, plus or minus 15 volts. The reality is, is that if you look deeper into some of the specs, you'll find that you certainly can use the op amp for lower supplies. I mean, here's an example in some of the performance characteristics graphs. If we look at them, here's one that, that plots out output voltage swing as a function of supply voltage. So here's our plus or minus 15 volt line here, and this says that we'll have you know about 25 volts guaranteed peak-to-peak -peak output swing Okay, when we had this 30 volt supply, plus or minus 15 volts. But you can see the curve extends all the way down to plus or minus 5 volt operation, or even, you know, which would be a single supply of 10 volts. We're only guaranteeing about 5 volts of swing, okay, but it could certainly still be used. So, uh, so don't be afraid if, uh, if all you've got on hand, for example, is a 741 op amp, you need an op amp for your circuit, and you've got, say, 10 volts to play with or 12 volts supply to play with, you probably could still use it. You just have to take care of um, you know, where those uh, voltages land. So the way to investigate that, I've uh, I put this little circuit together on my breadboard, and we'll go take a look at its operation. So it's a simple inverting amplifier, okay? And uh, so I've got a 2.2k feedback, a one one and a half k input. That's going to give me a voltage gain of you know about one and a half or so, okay? And uh, just a little bit greater than negative one, okay? It's an inverting op amp, okay? Inverting configuration. The output is connected to channel one on the scope, which will be the yellow trace. And then um, the uh, I've also set up rather than set up the resistor divider to set up the virtual ground here, I've set the virtual ground up with a power supply. Okay, so I can vary that power supply, you know, plus or minus. I'll be able to vary that uh, and change our operating point within you know, the voltage range here. Okay, and then my input signal, I've actually got uh, a signal generator that can do two things. Number one, I can vary the amplitude of the sinusoidal signal that I'm applying, and I can also vary the DC offset okay, that uh, we can apply with respect to this. So if we dial the DC offset to zero, then this voltage is gonna, just going to swing around my virtual ground, but this allows me to inject an offset above or below there so we can investigate what happens with the circuit when that all that happens. So my virtual ground is going to be plotted on channel 2 of the scope, and then my input signal will be plotted on channel 3 of the scope. Okay. So if we uh, turn on my power supplies here, okay, uh, there's my 1458 op amp sitting in the breadboard. And uh, we'll take a look over here at the scope. Okay. And on the scope, I've actually got uh, some cursors on here. Okay. This cursor and this cursor here, I've got setting, uh, sitting at uh, ground and plus 10 volts where my supply is. Okay, so uh, my power supply is uh, right there. You can see that's set to 10 volts. And then my virtual ground voltage right there is set to about 5 volts. Okay, and uh, so if we take a look again at the scope, okay, so that focuses in there. Here we go. Um, so this point here is my virtual ground, okay, the DC line that I see there. This lower, smaller amplitude signal that's in the pink, that's my input signal, okay. And then the larger uh, output signal is the, is the yellow trace number, uh, trace one. And um, we can see I've got a gain of just a little bit greater than minus one uh, in here. So again, this op amp we, we determined from the data sheet that we can, we're not gonna be able to get you know anything more than within a volt or two of uh, the supply rails. So let's uh, kind of see how that happens. If I change my virtual ground point to shift these signals up or down. Okay, let's move it down. Let's say I had a signal that was referenced near ground. You can see what's happening here as I move that down. The output is getting clamped about two volts above ground. Okay, because this op amp can't swing anything closer than that. Okay, and if we go up the other way, we can see we start to clamp at uh, about a volt or so, a little less than a volt from the positive supply. We start to clamp. Okay. Uh, so that's with um, you know these voltages moving back and forth.
Okay, so we can kind of see how much range I've got. Uh, I can't get too close to ground, and I can't get you know, too close to that positive rail. Okay, uh, we could also, if we wanted to, play with uh, the offset voltage, which uh, we can move, say, the input signal above. Okay, the um, the virtual ground point, and now I can see I'm burying my signal level, uh, my signal down below. Okay, I can kind of get everything kind of offset right and uh, get that back in. Similarly, if I bring my offset the other way, okay, we have to bring that back down again to kind of fit it all in there. Okay, so uh, again, as long as you kind of adhere to the requirements, you know, for where the input signals need to be and where the output signal can swing to, you certainly can use these op amps that are spec at split supply in a single supply application. Now, um, since most modern circuits and modern uh, systems operating are lower and lower voltages these days, um, most of the manufacturers have started to develop op amps that are designed for lower voltage operation and single supply operation. And the biggest distinction um, with the single supply operation devices is that normally now the input and output voltage ranges, okay, the input, the allowable input range sometimes will include one supply rail or the other, okay. Uh, like the inputs can be brought down very close to or even surrounding ground, okay, or the negative supply or the positive supply, and that the output can swing nearly to the supply rails, okay. And uh, nearly to meaning within tens of millivolts or something like that. Okay, and um, you'll start to hear terms like rail-to-rail -rail op amps. And usually, uh, when you hear a term called rail-to-rail -rail op amp, that means that either the inputs or the outputs or both or just the output um, can swing rail-to-rail -rail or can be brought uh, from one supply rail to the other. Sometimes the op amps will have maybe the inputs can go to ground and the output can swing rail-to-rail. -rail. Uh, there'll be different combinations, but uh, those are the things that you could look for depending on where you need your signals uh, to be used. So I've got a, a little rail-to-rail -rail op amp here. This little analog device is 8032. I just happen to have a couple of samples of these. It happens to be a really fast op amp, but it's also a really nice op amp in terms of uh, it'll operate down to 2.7 volts minimum supply, and its inputs and outputs will operate rail-to-rail. -rail. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Uh, what I'll do is let me uh, turn off my uh, power supplies here, and uh, we'll swap this guy out for the uh, 8032. Okay, so let's pop him in. Let's get him over here, and pop in in here. Boom. I'll turn the supplies back on. Power supply, the bias point, and my signal. So everything looks kind of normal here. Okay, just like we were looking at before. But now if I um, Increase the signal by kind of increase the offset and move it. We can see that that output signal doesn't clamp until we hit the supply rail. Okay, and we see if I bring my inputs all the way up, it's still operating normally even though I'm clipping, even though my inputs are going even up slightly above that positive supply rail. If I come down the other way, okay, the output clamps at zero. So we can certainly see the output can swing rail to rail. Okay, and the inputs and go even slightly below that supply rail and everything is still kind of working, okay? So, uh, and that's kind of the difference between, you know, a, a single supply op amp or one that's specified for rail-to-rail -rail operation. I increase the gain of the, the signal level here. I can see I'm starting to clamp, okay, on the positive because of where I am. If I center myself up here, I can get kind of a rail-to-rail -rail swing, you know, out of this uh, uh, op amp. So, uh, so certainly op amps that are designed for kind of single supply applications will generally have you know rail to rail swinging outputs and inputs that at least include one of the supply rails and those are the kind of things that you'd look for uh, for those types of applications so uh, anyway I hope this helped to answer some questions about uh, the difference between split supplies and single supplies what's meant by a virtual ground and uh, some of the considerations you might want to think of you know, in terms of uh, where these uh, voltages need to be uh, when using an op amp in a single supply application. And also, probably the most important thing is to think about is that uh, uh, if you need an op amp for a circuit that you're developing, um, you don't have to seek out one that is specified for single supply operation as long as you take care of where these voltages land uh, and, and where they are 
Uh, you could certainly use an op amp that is typically spec for split supply operation. So again, uh, any questions you have, I'd be happy to, to answer them for you. And uh, thanks again for watching.